was a wild night at Providence Park. The Oregon State Beavers played Montana State there last night. And as you can imagine, the fans were fired up. Last time the Beavers played at the stadium was in 1986 when it was still called Civic Stadium. Art Edwards was there and he tells us the atmosphere was electric. The Oregon State Beavers threw a big time Portland party. Hours before the start of the game, fans began to gather. A street outside the stadium blocked off for what they called tailgate town. Even before the game, the fans were ready to rock. Let's go be! Very cool. They used to be here all the time when I was growing up. They were, they were here every year for at least one game. It was nice. It took some time to get everyone inside Providence Park, but once they did get in, the stadium was packed and the fans were in full Beaver Nation mode. From the youngest fan to those in their Oregon State colors, some even wore their football gear. This is normally the home of the Timbers. Even their man, Timber Joey, made an appearance. This is something the fans have been hoping for. We're having a great time! Go Beavs! It's really nice to be able to just ride the Max train right down to Providence Park, where a soccer team plays and uh, catch a Beavers game. The Beavers put on a show, scoring touchdown after touchdown. Every time they scored, the fans went wild. There was plenty to cheer about since the Beavers scored 10 touchdowns. It's been a long time since Oregon State played at this stadium, and fans hope it'll happen again soon. I think they That's ought to have them every year. At least one or two. I'd like to see the Ducks play here. It's not going to happen, but I'd like to see it happen. Absolutely amazing. I hope the Beavers uh, do it every year. I think this should become a tradition. Parents with kids in the Richfield School District still aren't sure if their kids will go back to school on Monday. Teachers went on strike and all classes were canceled last week. At this point, the teachers union and the district are still bargaining. They are scheduled to meet again this morning at 930. The union wants more money for mental health support and special ed students. In a statement, the district says it believes it's reached an agreement with teachers on most of the outstanding issues. But again, as of right now, no deal has been agreed upon just yet. Salem Kaiser Public Schools have decided to revert back to virtual school board meetings after threatening behavior at the last in-person meeting. District Security launched an investigation into the board meeting last month in August. A report found adults associated with a couple groups escalated the tension. Some attendees were followed out to their cars, screamed at and called racists and white supremacists. So for the foreseeable future, school board meetings will remain accessible to the public online. For months, we've been talking a lot about inflation that's hovering near four decade highs. And now that pain looks like it's about to extend to some rent bills in Oregon. And that's because in 2023, landlords will be able to hike rent up to a whopping 14.6%. Tim Gordon explains why. Budget crushing inflation is having a big impact on renters in Oregon. State economists did the math and came up with a 14.6% cap on rent increases for next year, a higher number than many expected because it's tied to inflation. I'm shocked. Everybody should be shocked. Kim McCarty is executive director of the statewide Community Alliance of Tenants. She says the past few years have been very tough on renters and many pandemic related protections are ending. And then you pile on top of that a po po the possibility of a $200 rent increase, a 14.6 percent possible in increase in rent on top of the inflation that's happening to your food, your health care, child care, et cetera. It, this, it, we're, people are at a breaking point. We are hearing from you on this, too. Hundreds of comments on the KGW Facebook page, most expressing frustration. One writing, with the increase, people are going to have to get second and third jobs just to have a roof over their heads. But some also acknowledging the landlords. One saying landlords are struggling with inflation also. Everything about homeownership is up. 14.6% definitely, I'm sure, to a lot of people sounds like, you know, that's that's a big, big hike. Christian uh, Bryant is president of the Portland Area Rental uh, Owners Association. He also teaches people the rental business. Bryant says he understands the concern, but does not believe that most landlords able to raise rents 14.6% next year will do so. That said, the way it's set up right now is if you're a landlord, you're a business 
And it, if, if your costs go up, just like at your restaurant, you know, or the Home Depot, when they had to pay more for the materials that they sell, they charge the end user more. This is a groundbreaking piece of legislation. Governor Kate Brown signed Oregon's rent control bill into law in 2019, the first of its kind in the nation. It caps rent increases annually at 7% plus the consumer price index measure of inflation. In light of this 14.6% cap, Brown's office put out a statement saying in part, the governor is deeply concerned about the maximum rental increases that will be allowed under Oregon law in 2023, and she urges the legislature to prioritize action to mitigate future increases, adding, with today's inflation rates, it makes sense to re-examine state law. Kim McCarty says things do need to change. Tenants represent um, 40 percent of the households in Oregon. This is everybody's issue. and. We could easily, in Oregon, um, have your average household priced out of the market. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Some Washington moms are working on raising awareness surrounding childhood cancer. Coming up next, how they are encouraging giving funds and even donating blood to help sick kids.